Hi, I'm Jim Dubinsky, Managing Director here at Stellar Blue Technologies. And in today's vlog, I have our programming division. I've got Tim. Tim, welcome back. Thank you. you, sir. Thank you. And I've got Jason. Jason, looks like uh, you might be in your basement right now working hard, huh? <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Our programming right. games. <laughs> these are these are for those of you that are new to uh, the Stellar Vlog. These are our programmers. These are the guys that do the oh, I don't want to say the heavy lifting, but they really do um, make the the databases work. We're attaching SQL and and a lot of the. A lot of the things the majority of us don't understand. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> so, well, we uh, we here at Stellar Blue though have a lot of projects that um, we work on from the programming end, the, the back end portals, databases, uh, e commerce. A lot of those components contain really big databases and really fluid pieces that need to quickly respond to each other. And that's where these guys come in, uh, determining the structure that they set up. Um, the code that they're going to use um, and, and what pieces fit together the best. So um, I wanted to bring you two in today. And, and first of all, I wanted to uh, talk about uh, Belgian draft horse. We've got a client, uh, Belgian draft, excuse me, Belgian draft horse corporation. Uh, they're a firm or a corporation out of uh, Ohio, Tim, am I right? About yeah, that? yeah, definitely in Ohio. And they, uh, they manage all of the Belgian horses in the United States. Uh, you can compare it to very much like thoroughbreds, how, you know, there's an organization that manages all the thoroughbreds. Well, in the Belgian ho draft horse area, uh, they came to us and wanted us to build them basically uh, an ancestry.com for their breed of horses. Uh, so they, we had multiple meetings. Actually, we went down to Ohio got to talk to them in person, see some of those pieces in, in action. And then we came back and started building this out. And I want you guys just to kind of walk us through what you guys decided to build out now. And let me give you a little back history here. What, what the program does, it's trying to match up breeding of the horses so you can meet different, different um, quant or qualities of a horse within the database. So if this horse has got brown, this horse has got gray, you can decide on how that matches up, just like an Ancestry.com piece. So um, from there, I'll turn it over to you, Tim. You want to show us a little bit about where you guys started? Um, I do know the fun, one of the fun parts here was the fact that you guys had to build out an algorithm in order to make this work. You were given an equation, and from that equation, you had to build out the entire product. So can you kind of show us that where you guys started just off of one piece of of uh, one equation and then from there we did what we did yeah definitely got that one equation and then exported it into this big tree here so let me turn yeah. on my screen here and let's dive right in yeah so we got this formula right here and this is what they came to us with and it definitely is some very geeky summation of the different formulas but yeah. a lot of their ancestries competitions like you say was only going four generations maybe five generations back but with this formula we took it farther than any of their competition and made it to go to six generations back so yeah. we can kind of use this formula and here's an example of three generations or use how to get to the fourth ones but yet then we kept expanding it and to show their site then we can load up the six gen ancestry here on the left side here and it loads up and you can see the whole tree for the six different generations. Ah. And it kind of calculates that coefficient of inbreeding that we did with that big formula. And this one is 14%. And so with the inbreeding, it also highlights the specific horses that have the inbreeding going on. So a lot on the top here is the different Farsa names kind of mixed here. So and when, I see, when I see Conquer down there in green, Tim, what does that mean <laughs> that there's three green? So then it's the same horse with the same parentage and they bred for multiple times over and over again. So Conqueror we bred over and then they bred into the Shirley multiple times in the generation down and progress a couple of times in the pink here. So it kind of shows that side of the trees even more heavily uh -huh. in breeding going on. Uh -huh. You can see okay. S26607, the one of the blues appears both as the early generation further down. Oh yeah. You can see with the color codes quickly too. 
Mm -hmm. So the color code really sticks out and some of the horses were really light up like a Christmas tree with all the different colors going on and some are very clean and not much inbreeding going on. So you can see it as a host or you can be kind of like that ancestry.com and not only that, you can also be like matchmaker and decide that you wanted to pair a few different horses so you can <laughs> pick out sure. that conqueror that we saw look up. Sure. It shows all the different results to you and we can do concords, Janie, Jody, pick one and matching these two horses, we can test how the breeding goes between the two and here's the tree, if you were to mate these two together and shows how much in breeding. So you can look up the specific host at any time or if you want to play matchmaker, you can also see how the inbreeding goes on would look. It's even showing inbred horses that disappear further down too. Mm -hmm. So even though we only show the six generations, like Jason was saying, it kind of shows, it looks up to the seventh generation, eighth generation, looks even farther back yet than what the tree shows. As you can see, there's only so much screen space we can show. So there's talks that we might show all seven screens, but that would definitely be a little bit tricky, but mm -hmm. it's in the works that we might show all seven generations even, so. Interesting. So. There's a lot of conquerors in this list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Conquerors, yeah. A conqueror, a state, or Penn State conqueror. Yeah, there's almost 200,000 horses in this wow. registry. That's, like you say, they're the Corporation of America here, and they're even talks with combining with uh, people from Canada. To, I heard that. Yeah. So they're kind of talks, and they might even go into the 300 or 400,000 horses by the time it's said and done with all the ones and all the breeding going on. And they handle every registration to the hosts, and they get you registered in the system. You can look up the other people, and that's where you can be this, and you can click right on the host it will load up the host specifically and then you know who's the, like the owner who where it was all bred by and you can uh -huh. contact joseph and be like hey i want to breed with your host and you already know all the different details so mm -hmm. it's kind of a good way to have that registry all together and tim you might want to just show what it looks like without an admin signed in Yeah, so if we log out of the admin, you don't have to be a registered user to be all this, but if you're not logged in and you're not an admin like we are, you can click in here and you can still see all the data and you can see the current owner without, like before you saw the text foods where you can undo in all the data because we're the admins, but here at least you still get the information of the current owner and you can click on current owner and sure enough, there's all the details and all the different registered hosts he has and Sure. So it's very navigable between all the different things. So if you want to navigate to the owner, to the horse, to the uh, who bought it, you can click on all these things and keep jumping around and jump between owner screen to the host screen to the different areas like that. So you can really get to know the horse to, or mm -hmm. get to know the owner or whatever. Mm -hmm. And see right down shine the things. And oh, yeah, he has three, four, five horses. Maybe I should contact him because uh -huh. there's a lot of horses. Or a lot of these horses, they yeah. were just back in the 1960s to the 80s, 90s. As I say, that's the, that's how you get all the generations behind. And mm -hmm. they came to us in 2010 and we created the system. And that's where they've been taking rooms and filing cabinets of paperwork to get this in here with like about the last 10 years here to really make yeah, this I remember that, populated that up. one of the main things was getting them away from a lot of paper shuffling and really automating it and, and making it um, mobile friendly as well they can be doing this on their phones from anywhere in the world yeah. to be honest with you mm -hmm. Go on mobile just shrink the window there we go sure yeah so you can See the different things, go back to the hosts. It's kind of that view. And if we pretend we're on a phone here, we can get to the different hosts and screens again here and click back to hosts and see all the different areas that mm -hmm. collapse in. And we want to get to the breeder. We have the little white arrow so we can still navigate just as easy to get to the breeder, get to the owners of the different things as well. So sure. We have the back screen, we can search for hosts or other things we can really navigate as well, just on mobile as well. It's really good. Looks good. Like the color scheme too. So the other thing I, I wanted to mention, and I know you guys were working on was the way the horses are registered or they're, they're set up now that used to be very, again, very paper heavy, very document heavy, sign this piece of paper, take this there, go move here. We, we eliminated all that. In fact, they, 
we even removed U.S. mail from the system. They used to have to mail stuff from one coast to the other coast. We automated that whole system. Can you talk a little bit about that, Tim, and, and how we've really made life easy for Belgian Draft Horse Corporation? Yeah, definitely. We have, like you say, the whole books of financing system in here so that we can log all the different accounts receivable and payments they receive. If they transfer the four different mails or horses, that you can also have the registration of the horses. If you have all the different fees that they have in the company for transfers of registrations, and yeah. they can say that they paid by cash or credit card, and it's just that good logging of the books, whatever, and everything. So their staff is in here and all day and sometimes say they were looking up horses or owners and somebody calls in and oh, I want to make a payment for my registration of horses. We have a new thing that Jason programmed called Jeff, which is the quick Jonah. What does it stand for again, Jason? I know it's down here in the bottom right, but if you want to explain this a little bit. Yeah, it's like journal entry fast form or something. We just now just call it quick entry, but you can do a person or a horse and it looks it up two by number or name too. Just add the account entry. So they see, oh, Jeff called in, click on Jeff, find the name, click on him, say that he just, well, just transferred a few horses, put in the amount and everything in here, click submit and off it adds it to that Jonah entry. So when they get the phone calls, they're not even leaving the screen that they were on. They can make note of the payments as they come in without leaving. So it's definitely very user friendly for the staff as well entering in things. Mm -hmm. Great. And I think one other main things that to note that we did work on this is we partnered with UC Davis that's out in California. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so that's they have DNA kits that they can request off and they can request if they want DNA for this horse or Jeb carrier disease or the, verify the parentage, which also checks the DNA out to check out the thing. So once it go, that request, they hit submit, it goes off to UC Davis. They get an email saying, hey, this host and everything that you're on the host gets sent over to UC Davis correctly. They prepare everything for the testing kit and send it to the owner address on file. And then they get the kit that they have to cut off a little hair sample from the horse tail to get it all attached in and send over. So once they attach in that kit and send that back to UC Davis with the kit that they receive, UC Davis receives that, they enter it into their systems, do their testing if they carriers of jab or the DNA to check parentage and whatnot. And once it comes back in, it goes to the host page automatically and they get the PDF certificate, they get the results updated here for DNA or if they carriers of jab. Because I know there's a good chance if you, the host is carrier of jab, they would die within the first 12 months. Yeah, yeah, so it's not good that. to breed with that host if they're likely to carry it. So that's where it's definitely good to know and to say Jeb. And I think there's a few other things like that. It all sends out and sure. the PDF gets saved in here. And then we kind of get a certificate and then they either save that, print it. So it's all automated. Everything goes. And once you hit that submit, the kit gets to right. UC Davis. Everything, I say it's all streamlined. The our use systems talk to UC Davis systems and all that communication happens in the back end. Right. And they don't have to worry about anything in Belgium. It's just there. And the, the time and money saving, the ROI on this is amazing. When you start adding up the fact of all that extra time that we've cut out of the system and what that, what that now means to what else Belgian can do with that time. I think that's kind of the hidden piece here of all this was where it was where it was all paper. And now it's basically, they can have two or three people running the entire corporation. Just exactly. This piece is doing all the work for them. They had a call in to UC Davis every time somebody needed to request a DNA right. kit and right. say all that. Here's my host number. Here's what we think all the parent did. And that's what has verifies and all the address of the owner on file and all that. That's just gets hidden behind the scenes and the time saved of that phone call every time. And they were doing these phone calls every day for how many times. So, right. right. And they're often cutting down hours and hours. And like you say, the ROI in that is just literally hundreds, if not thousands of hours a year on all that time saved. I mean, so that many times. The ROI, they're very happy people. So I know we've been talking about them for enhancement, enhancements and things like that too. So, well, good. Tim, I, one thing I wanted to share that you, 
after this was all said and done and the, and the Belgian Horse Corporation was thrilled and things were going on, uh, they actually entered this into, uh, or they had a magazine article uh, printed about them and the advancements of that. I just want to show that real quick. So check this out. Did you, I don't know, Jason, if you saw this, but we were actually in, in this magazine article. They had this advancing the breed registry through technology. And they just basically said what Tim just went through and all this stuff. And uh, yeah, we made national news. And, and I know uh, I've heard that in the background that the Clydesdale folks are looking for us. <laughs> so, i think we'll be helping the clydesdale folks soon enough all right hey well thanks guys that was really cool yeah. i appreciate the walkthrough and i'm sure the the visitors here as well it's it's really cool what you guys can do just with a, an algorithm or a formula and how that expanded and changed this entire corporation uh, for history basically um so really appreciate it i um Looking forward to talking to you guys much more. I know you guys got a whole bunch of these projects that you've worked on and completed. So um, we're looking forward to having you back here soon and uh, we'll talk some more projects. Thanks. Have a day, you guys. Talk to you soon. Talk to you later.